this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to look at the Nexus 10, the latest tablet from Google. It's also the only 10 inch tablet from Google and it's a very nice device built by Samsung. 10.1 inch display, extremely high resolution, 2560 by 1600 pixels. New CPU inside, dual core Exynos CPU. Nice build quality. I don't think it's the prettiest tablet but it is, it's, feels rugged. It's got a nice soft touch back and we're going to look at it now. So finally, here it is. I know you guys and gals have been dying for our Nexus 10 review, and well, we've got one. This is the 32 gig model. Uh, right now, it's pretty hard to find this. It, it was in stock pretty readily available on uh, Google's website, but now it's gone out of stock right before the Christmas holiday shopping season is about to reach its final pitch and, pitch and fever. But you can get this at Walmart. You can get this at Staples if they have them in stock, and they do sell the 32 gig, kind of what they do with the Nexus 7. They sell the higher capacity in stores. Now, price for this guy, this is not a cheap tablet. Even though Google has been trying to bring down price points and, and flood the market, basically, whatever costs to them, this guy is $399 or $400, basically, for the 16 gig model and $499, call it $500, bucks, for the 32 gig model. And we do recommend the 32 gig model because this does not have a micro SD card slot. It does not have USB host. So far, even with rooting, I don't think anybody's found a way to get USB host going on this guy. So the storage that's built in is the storage that you got, so you want to make sure that you've got enough. That said, taking a look at it, it's a, a unique looking tablet, isn't it? It's, it's kind of got that, it almost looks like a child's tablet in a way to me. It, it's kind of pulled out ovally looking instead of your usual more rectangular looking product. Not ugly, not beautiful. I do like the build quality on it though. The centerpiece is definitely the display. This is really a media consumption tablet because it has a super high resolution display, higher than the Retina iPad. It's 2560 by 1600 pixels. That is a lot of pixels. It's basically 4K resolution. In fact, we have a 4K test file we're going to play on this so you can see something playing at super duper high resolution on this display in a bit. It's bonded glass. This is Gorilla Glass 2 on top, which is always nice to know. It makes it a little bit more durable. Uh, Clearly, we got pretty big bezels here. One thing that we do have, Samsung makes this device, and we have Samsung's new signature design element, which is the speaker grills are actually along the side here on both sides of the tablet, facing at you so you can hear them better. It's still not the world's loudest tablet. The audio quality is pretty good, but it really helps when the, when the music or the video soundtrack is aiming at you. You don't really need it to be all that loud. We have a 1.9 megapixel camera here on the front. No hardware buttons. We, we don't do hardware buttons with Android tablets. Almost 1.4 pounds, so not super duper light, not super heavy, a little bit lighter than the iPad 3 and the iPad 4. It doesn't feel heavy to me. It's pretty thin. If we take a look at it. Samsung is good at making thin products. And on this side, we have the micro USB port. That's also where you plug the charger in. For those of you who have a Previous Samsung tablets, it's the same charger, but the cable has changed. Instead of that 30 pin proprietary connector that Samsung uses on their tablets, this just uses a micro USB cable, which is in the box. And there is our headphone jack next to it. Now, on the bottom here, we have what's called a pogo pin magnetic charging connector. It does not come with that charger in the box. Bummer. Why not? I don't know. It would be nice to know about that. Some people have complained about the charger actually not having enough output. It's a standard 2 amp charger for the standard micro USB charger in the box to charge this if you have bra brightness at the maximum and you're playing a demanding 3D game. So far we have not run into problems with that and it actually does charge over regular USB for actually transferring files. Over here on this side we have micro HDMI port so you can plug this into your TV. Good times to have that. Up top right here we have our volume controls and our power button. Both quite easy to use, but they don't stick out too much either, so you're not going to hit them by accident. And the back is really interesting here. It's a soft touch finish. Boy, it is the most rubbery thing you've ever felt. It, it just feels neat. You just kind of want to touch it. You're not going to drop this tablet, that's for sure. Unlike Samsung's own branded tablets that are always super glossy plastic and very slippery, not a problem here. We have a kind of stippled look over here to make it a little, look a little more interesting. 5 megapixel camera, LED flash, big old Nexus here in the rubber, and a little Samsung logo. You can see. And at certain angles it is reflective, but believe me, it's rubbery, even though you see that kind of reflection you think of a hard plastic. So again, I still wouldn't call this a pretty tablet, but it feels solid, it feels nicely made, it doesn't flex. For those of you who don't like the Galaxy Note 10.1 because it has flex.
Not a problem here. Feels good. And now for size comparison, for those of you who can't decide between the Nexus 7 and the Nexus 10, here we have the Nexus 7. A whole lot smaller, that's for sure. Similar design aesthetic, we have that soft touch kind of stippled back on this guy here. I actually prefer the looks of this tablet, the 7 inch tablet, but I prefer the, the, the ergonomics and the sensation of the back material on the 10 inch Nexus. Now, since this is a Google Nexus device, that means you're running pure Android here. You don't get TouchWiz, you don't get HTC Sense, you don't have any sort of customizations, any bloatware installed, or any of those sometimes actually useful applications like Office Suites preloaded. So if you want Office Suite or an Office Viewer, yeah, you go ahead and download it for yourself. Uh, if you want different music players, different video players, you're going to have to go seek them out for yourself. I would still say that Nexus products are really geared more towards power users. The Nexus 7 kind of changed that because at the 199 price point, everybody wanted a piece of that. That was just so affordable. But really, if you're looking at the $500 32 gig, there's a whole lot of other branded products. The Asus Transformer Infinity TF700, the Galaxy Note 10.1, and those have a lot more software to get you started. For those of you who are absolute newbies and don't really know what to do with the tablet, that can be a handy thing. But for you guys who are more, and gals, who are more well-versed in tablets and you already know what software you want and where to find it on the Google Play Store and you don't want a whole lot of extra UI bloatware here slowing down your tablet, you get that here. Out of the box we had Jelly Bean Android OS 4.1. It got an update to 4.2 immediately, so we're running the latest and greatest Android operating system here. And it should always be the first to get updates. All the Nexus products usually are. Very, very fast. It's just... This is the most responsive Android tablet that I have used today, and you know, I've used every single one. Just a pleasure to use. Everything is quick on it, works just fine. Haptic feedback, by the way. Nice haptic feedback, too. Not buzzy, not noisy, but you feel it, you can hear it just a little bit. It runs on a 1.7 gigahertz Samsung Exynos 5 dual CPU. That's their latest dual core CPU, and you might say, oh, bummer, it's not the quad core that was in the Note 10.1 and some of the recent smartphones like the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2. But you know what? It scores just about as fast, sometimes faster, in some benchmark tests. And this is the new ARM Cortex A15 versus the old ARM 9 inside. And it really is just a fast moving tablet. On Quadrant, it scored a 49.59. On Tutu, it was a very impressive 13,658. GL Benchmark 2.5 Egypt 2.1 Classic test was. 50 frames per second on screen and 89 frames per second off screen. That's very good. Sun Spider was 1308 using the built in Chrome browser, which is not the fastest for testing Sun Spider JavaScript, but that is the built in browser, so that's what we use. In comparison, the Galaxy Note 10.1, a high scoring little devil there, 5349, so a little bit higher on Quadrant versus the 4959. On Tutu was 12,777, which is a bit lower than the Nexus 10. So you can see we're getting comparable or better than comparable performance in some cases, even though we've gone to a dual core CPU. And honestly, Android doesn't ne necessarily need all those cores. As long as it's getting the performance it needs out of one or two cores, you're, you're looking at something that works quite well. It has Mali T604 graphics. That is an advanced graphics chip that is beyond what's used in the Exynos 4 series dual and quad core. Very good gaming performance, very good graphics performance, and is able to actually play back 4K video, which is native resolution video for this incredibly high resolution tablet. This is a Samsung PLS display, which is their answer to IPS. Absolutely gorgeous. Some people have complained about having problems with some light bleed on theirs. All tablets, to a certain extent, honestly do have light bleed. Ours does not have that problem whatsoever. Very wide viewing angles, very pleasing colors, very natural. Some Samsung products tend to have uh, kind of overly cool and hyper exaggerated colors. This one now is just pretty much spot on and pleasing. And to, to give it a real test here, we have a 4K video. This is a native resolution video, and we're going to use the built in video player. See how that does without going for hardware decoding features on uh, third party players. It's doing beautifully. And you can hear the built-in speakers, what they sound like. So, really nice.
on a lot of devices, we, we test out 1080p video playback, 1920 by 1080, and we say, what's the point? Because the built-in screen can't even support that. In this case, you can actually go higher, as with this file right here, 2500 by 1400 pixels. That's pretty good. And we're going to look at a trailer that is 1080p MPEG-4 high profile, just to see how that does, too, since that's probably what most of you guys are going to have. And it's playing just fine. Beautiful looking. Lovely display once again. Perfect tablet for media consumption. And yes, it clearly has the horsepower to handle this quality video playback. And it does have micro HDMI out, so you can also plug this into your TV. The tablet has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn with MIMO, Bluetooth. It also has dual side NFC for those of you who are real NFC geeks, a GPS and the usual accelerometer and gyro sensors for screen rotation and for game playing, a barometer for you folks who are weather freaks, and actually so it can monitor itself, ambient light sensor, digital compass built in, 9,000 milliamp battery, that's a whole lot of battery right there built right in, and of course like most tablets it is sealed inside. So what apps do you get with this? Now I've added a lot of apps, all the benchmarking things are mine, all the games are mine, other than that you get the usual PIM applications, you get the Google Contacts, Google Calendar, YouTube Player, Play Store, of course, and that's where you're going to find all of your software to download. We have Google Plus on board, Google Earth, Google Maps, Google Places, all the Google stuff, Google Voice Search, and some of the goodies. Here we have Google Now. Your lovely jelly bean feature right here gives you the weather, shows you more cards. If you have appointments coming up, they'll show up here. It does location-based stuff, too, so say you're traveling now, if it actually has an active data connection, you'd have to use the mobile hotspot on your smartphone or some kind of hotspot to give it data on the road, but it would alert you if there was any traffic delays on your way back home once you actually told it where home is. And we have Google Search with Voice Search, which is, actually does a pretty good job. What is Google's stock price? to 721 US dollars and 15 cents in after hours trading. Take that, Siri. That's pretty good. Now, you can't do quite as many natural language, funny, entertaining things as you can with Siri, but for all sorts of practical things, it works quite well. When's my next appointment? Fly to CES is January 7th, 2013, 1225 p.m. Yes, folks, I'll be attending CES in January. It's ready. So, does a great job, works well, pleasant voice to listen to. Web browser built in is the Chrome web browser. Chrome is a very capable web browser. It handles HTML5 video, no flash, sorry. Also, the latest versions of Dolphin and Firefox will not do flash for you, for those of you who want to side load flash. But, the Boat browser will, which we have installed as well, and we've tested it with Amazon Instant Video, Amazon Prime, and it does work. You know, using Flash Player controls to play video isn't my favorite thing to do, but it's better than nothing if you want your Amazon Prime videos, it does the job. Fast scrolling, responsive, works just fine, no problem here. We'll test out a little video playback. We'll look at the Droid DNA video review. And this is on our Wi-Fi, doing just fine. Good lip sync. Works fine. And for those of you who want to see your Amazon Prime video, here we have the boat browser going right now, and it's loading it up. And it does indeed work. And for those of you who have never heard of it before, there's our little icon for the boat browser, free on Google Play Store, and then you have to sideload Adobe Flash. Turn on Allow Installation of Non-Market Apps under Settings, and then go to Adobe's website and search for Adobe Flash Player 11.1 for Android. They still have it up there on the website if you go hunting for it. Since we're running the latest, greatest Android OS, we have the nice swipe down over here. It gives you quick control to your stuff, like your brightness, all of your settings, your wireless, your rotation, get your battery status, Bluetooth on and off. 
like that. And if we had any notifications, they would show up right here. You know, email messages, app updates from the Play Store, all that kind of stuff. And for Google Play, we have widgets for that. Because this is standard Android, there's not a whole lot of widgets built in. Usually you just get bombarded with widgets with an Android phone, but we just get the basics from Google here, but that does include the Play Store and a couple of other things, and we'll show you that. We can look at what widgets are installed on this guy. Clocks, bookmark features, Google Currents, Google Books widget, Inbox, Photo Gallery, so just the basics right here. But you can, of course, download stuff to your heart's content from the Google Play Store and add widgets as you see fit. Down here you can see the launcher strip that we've got, and they've got a preload with Google stuff, Google Play, Google Music, the YouTube Player, Google Videos, Google Books and Magazines, and Chrome Browser, Gmail, and we're going to actually take a look at magazines because they are nice looking. Really sharp screen is great for reading. Now, magazines can be a little bit of a challenge because, as you can see, very tiny looking here, but we're going to turn this to portrait mode. And suddenly, even though the text is small, it becomes very readable. Now, you can zoom in and out on this. You can choose to read an article view here, view text. So if something is largely text-based, there you go. And it's still a fairly pleasant layout. Really nice to read magazines on. The other thing I would say is with the the aspect ratio that we've got here, you get a very tall, skinny tablet versus the 4x3 that the iPad uses, and just very few Android tablets. So it's a little bit wobbly. You're going to have to make sure you support that pretty well. Our stand actually just dropped it a second ago, in fact, because it is a little bit out of balance. But other than that, very nice presentation. Fast, even though this is fairly heavyweight content here, it's just looking very nice. We can pop around, navigate to other sections. Exit text view, go back to a really pretty looking magazine layout. So, a pleasure. And while we're at it, why don't we take a look at books. Now, this is Google Play Books. You can put Kindle on here, you can put Nook on here, Sony Reader, whatever your favorite book reader is. And even though text is set to a fairly small size right now, super sharp, very readable, every bit as nice as the iPad with a retina display. Oh, it's just really gorgeous looking. And Samsung did a nice job here too. The, the white background looks white. It doesn't look blue, it doesn't look pink, it doesn't have any bizarre color cast whatsoever, so it's very easy on the eyes. Good looking stuff. And of course, if you like facing pages better, we've got facing pages. Good page turn speeds. Very nice to read on. And we do have a 5 megapixel camera on the back. That's not as impressive as the 8 megapixel cameras we see on higher end smartphones these days, but still, it's not that bad if you don't mind waving a big tablet around, and you can shoot 1080p video as well. So here's our very standard looking interface. We've got flash control right here. We can switch between camera, video, panorama mode, the 360 mode, which is new. We've got our big shutter button right there. We have Tap to focus. And we have a, a bizarre new pop-up circle interface for controlling things. I don't find that the easiest thing to use, but... So I have a circle of different things that I can control here. My, my EV and my flash, auto white balance. We go to settings and here's my options for resolution, scene mode. Pretty minimalist stuff here in terms of what you can shoot with, but you know, it gets the job done. So we tap to focus. The picture is pretty quick. Switch to video mode. And we're recording video, nothing too much going on there, but right there you see the screen flash, that's because I'm taking pictures while I'm shooting video at the same time. And now we're going to check out some gaming, and we're going to use this GameStop wireless Bluetooth controller that they make for Android devices to play GTA 3, because that's so much easier to play with a controller. Now the controller is a little bit weird. When I paired it up, it actually tried to switch the keyboard input to be the controller, which inputted D's and J's and H's and a couple of other things, so I had to turn that off. But inside the game, it actually worked okay. And we have this set at 100% resolution right now and graphics quality to high, so we're asking as much of it as it can give us. 
Well, let's see how many people I can run over here. Going just fine. And now we're in Nova 3, a really good looking game. Gosh, it looks awesome on this. Never seen it look so good. Plays great, looks great, really nice experience, can handle gaming just fine. And the other nice thing is it's not getting hot to the touch, unlike some tablets, it's not uncomfortable to hold. And now we're going to do Beach Buggy Blitz, so accelerometer based driving game. Great frame rates, playing just fine. So definitely a good tablet for gaming. Between the gorgeous display and the good performance, I have no complaints. I have really not had any problems with frame drops in any game so far that I've played. So with the 9000 milliamp battery, so far we've had pretty good battery life dead. Usually with 10-inch tablets, I measure battery life in terms of days of actual average use because it's not like a phone that you tend to have on as much during the day actively using it. And I've had no trouble going two days, three days on a charge with this with moderate use. That includes playing videos, playing some games, using it for music playback, streaming some videos, playing some locally stored videos, web, and email. Now, the more you do a video playback or particularly aggressive 3D gaming, the shorter your battery life will be there. That's true with any device these days. Uh, but so far, battery life has been good. I know some of you are trying to decide between this and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 and I'm going to sum up a couple of the, the big differences between them. For display quality, obviously the Nexus 10 is going to win. A higher resolution display, a superior display. It's not to say the Note 10.1 has a terrible display, but it's not class leading like this guy is. The other big difference is the digital pen. You get the active digitizer with the Wacom pen on the Galaxy Note 10.1. For those of you who are artists and want to draw, or for those of you who want to take notes, that makes a big difference right there. This guy here does not have an active digitizer. You can use a capacitive stylus, but it's not precise. Not good if you're going to do fine detail work, if you have small handwriting, if you want to do serious digital art. Galaxy Note 10.1 would be better for you. And then there's the issue of custom software versus pure Android. I think you techie geeky types are going to prefer pure Android experience right here. Nothing is slowing you down. No touch with none of those UI enhancements that you hate so much. And it's very easy to root this and install custom ROMs on it. So big selling point for the Nexus 10 would be those features. So the Galaxy Note 10.1, the, the custom software can actually be a selling point for the average consumer. Those of you who don't care about a pure Android experience and don't intend to put custom ROMs on your device, but you'll probably like the, the digital pen enhancements, the side-by-side -side application view that has a floating application function that makes it actually a more productive product on the Galaxy Note 10.1. And lastly, their support, Google's support, is not known to be really world-class. So for those of you, again, who are more the newbie types, if you want to call up and ask, gee, how do I use the web browser or how do I get this done? You know, Probably you'll have more luck with Samsung support. Google support's a little bit weak on those things. They're pretty good if you just have a device problem and you need to return an exchange again, a new one, but for anything more than that, I once went through a comical seven page long discussion with them once just about the Google Play Store not working on a particular tablet, which did happen to be a Nexus tablet, and they told me it was the manufacturer's fault, but they were the ones I was supposed to contact about that. So you can go through some dead ends with it. Watch out for that. Again, if you're 
experienced user, if you can rely on forums and your friends to get help with some of the products that you, problems you might have with the product, go for it. And probably you won't even have any problems, but if you're a newbie, mm, not so much. So that's the Nexus 10 tablet. It's available now. might be a little hard to find in stock, but hopefully you'll get a hold of it. It's certainly a nice tablet for the money. It may not be cheap, but it's one of the fastest, smoothest tablets that we've tested in a long time running Android. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.